the difference highlighting. Uh, let's let's add another Greek text here. I'm going to enter in the a Byzantine Greek text. Okay, we're John John 18. Um, so now I have the BGT, which is the Nestle Alon critical Greek text, and then the Byzantine text is uh, the Byzantine text put out by uh, Maurice Robinson and William Pier uh, Pierpont. Now I'm going to toggle the difference highlighting. The difference highlighting is going to show where they differ. I uh, notice the green is here in your English texts, and then you have this uh, kind of a pinkish background is for your Greek texts. So as you go down through your verses, you're going to see where there's differences in the spelling. So it's a a, a very fast way to see where there are going to be uh, textual differences or translation differences in your texts. So, so that can be that can be a useful tool. Uh, it'd be good if you're say you're uh, preparing Sunday school lessons or messages and uh, you have your congregation is using different translations. This way you can see, okay, I know that people that translation are going to have such and such a reading. Another translation, they're going to have this reading. I may need to address that in my message. So it would be a fast way to, to identify you know, if there's anything significant that needs to be addressed. So, <coughs> clarify for the, for the group. Um, we have something uh, <coughs> similar name, but uh, functionally differently, is the toggle morphological or morphology highlighting. Okay, notice now that I have a, a number of things changed here. Um, I'm going to close the... BYZ at this point, just keep it the BGT for simplicity right now. Um, notice the colors are different here. I have blue and I have red. I'm going to right click and I'm going to open the morphology color settings file. Here I have what version, well, you know, what type of text. So you have a Hebrew text, Hebrew morphology, and you have Greek morphology. And um, it has the morphological codes for it. It does not have a lemma. This is not for searching lemmas, not for highlighting search results, but this is to color morphologies. So for example, here with the BNM, I have nouns, I have a blue text. I have verbs, I have a red text. And that's what we have here in the display. We have a blue text and we have a red text. Interesting. Okay, so when I, I have, uh, I'm going to select the BGT as my search version, so I'm going to go to the multi-version mode. And now you notice as you read down through the text, you can see where your nouns are, you can see where your verbs are. <clears throat> so that can be useful as you're going down through the text and identifying who's speaking, uh, what sort of uh, actions are being presented, find significant terms that way. You can edit these. Notice here on this side here for editing it, with the verbs, I can just change this and okay, have the B, my, my morphology helper pops up. So if I want to have indicative, present, active verbs, and maybe I want to, maybe that's all I want to specify, I'm going to put the asterisk there once again and click OK. And uh, now I'm going to go back here and refresh this. <clears throat> and now I have a much more limited number of verbs that are covered in red because I made it more specific. So you can do that. Say you want to have I want all of the heiress in uh, dark blue. I want all of the uh, imperfects in an orange background. I mean, you can do all of these things and see how the text has a, a flow of thought there. You can do that. So you can specify it, whatever your purpose is dictating. So, and to toggle that off when you're done, just go back up to the browse, op browse window options button and toggle the morphology highlighting. And then when you refresh this, uh, they're gone. Okay. That's the uh, morphological highlighting. And then the, uh, the word tips. Um, by default, there's something called word tips that are turned on. I tend to turn them off, but I'm going to toggle these on. Toggle word tips on the uh, options menu. Now when I put my cursor over a word, notice you have a word tip pops up. It's going to have, uh, give you a, a gloss, and it's going to have the parsing appears there. Now this is a gloss. It's not a full, not a full definition. Uh, this gloss is coming out of our vocabulary flashcard module, which we have not talked about yet. But that's where the glosses come from. So they are only very brief. Now these uh, appear as you're hovering over over the words, and they, they move with your, your text. Now, I want to show how you can keep those open, and you can put them in a certain location on the screen as well. So I'm going to go to Tools and Options, 
and this is the first time we've gotten into this, but there's the options flags. So right here for flags. These are all sorts of configuration options. And since we're dealing with a browse window item, you want to go to the browse window configuration options. And you go down through here, and here it, it shows show word tips and keep word tips open. So I'm going to check keep word tips open. That is turned off by default. It's unchecked. So I'm going to check that. And now I'm going to put my cursor on the word. And now it stays open. And I can move it over to the side. And now when I can move my cursor over the words and see it's still updating. But uh, it's, it's out of my way. Now it stays open all the time now. So that may be good if you, for example, don't, don't want to have the analysis window open. So <laughs> toggle that off with the T. So I, I no longer have the analysis window there, but I'm able to still have my glosses for reading. What so, uh, would help is if you could have some highlighting over in the you know, um, lexicon window for that verse. As it, cause I, so, cause sometimes I have to hunt through there. It'll list all, all the times the word appears having a certain meaning. But then, it, it just if someone could have a, a function to highlight that. Actually, yeah, there, is, there is a way to do that. Coming to your question here, um, I am going to, see. okay, John, yeah, 18.3 appears here for this verse. Okay, but right. you have to look for it and find it. Yes. However, I am going to right click and I am going to look up Lemma in Lexicon Browser and select. And then I'm going to go to my Lexicons, which of course that, that one was the Denker. Okay. And I'm going to select Lexicon. And I'm going to go down and choose Banker Greek Lexicon. And notice the highlighting. Yes, okay. Okay, so let me run through the steps again on how I did that. This Lexicon browser pops up. You're usually not using this because you're using the analysis window. But I'm going to right click on the word. And I'm going to look up Lemma in Lexicon browser. And then whatever my Lexicon that appears there is at the top. So you can select whichever one you wish. In this case, I have Danker and it's highlighted then. Right. So it shows me where it appears in that reference, which can be very useful, especially in your longer ones. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Your BDAG, your BDB, your, you know, things like that, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot. So, so that, that is very fast. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, while we're there in, in showing the Lexicon browser, I'm going to, uh, John 18.3, I'm going to right click, and I am going to send the verse to the Lexicon browser. This is going to send all the words there in the order order which they appear. So now you can run down through your list of words and look at them here in the Lexicon browser. There's your John 18.3 once again. So there's it. Oh, it, it's only going to pick your default lexicon to show me. Whichever one you have chosen last, yes. Okay. So you can change your lexicons, but it's only the one that you've, that you've chosen last. Okay. Yes. Okay, so. So that's something you can do as well. So since all the words from that, that goes up to the lexicon. Okay. 